All right, hello and welcome everyone and thank you for joining us. Today we have a WebEx presentation on creating visual themes for online instruction. My name is Gary Gates. I'm the instructional 3D artist at Online Education and I'll be the moderator. And the presentation will be handled by Dan Antoniak, who's our instructional multimedia developer and Sue Armitage, who is one of our instructional designers. So without further ado, I will turn it over to Sue and she will go ahead and get things started. All right, well, thank you, Gary, and welcome to everyone. Um, I'd like to point out at, at the bottom line of my slide here that I am indeed a big fan of beautiful art in online classes. Courses, I think, to make an enormous impact. So that's why I was so excited to join with Dan to put together this webinar today. So to get us started, we're going to talk about learning objectives. But you know what? I need to step back before that because I, I'm interested in who you all are who have joined us today. Um, I guess my big question is, have you taught a course in Web Campus before? Like, do you have any experience already with the things that we're going to talk about? So if you could, everyone, please, um, go to the chat section of the WebEx interface. It's in the lower right-hand corner. And if you could send a message to everyone, so it says send to everyone, and then just type in a message. And please let me know, have you taught before in online? And that will get us all in the same a sense of um, the experience that we're all bringing to this. Um, so I see yes, yes. Larry says he hasn't, okay. Um, Gary says yes. Chris, yes. Let's see, Sherry and Shauna, I'd love to hear from you too. Um, the question is, have you taught online before? Do you have any experience dealing with issues of, of structure and art and how they all can work together to help students be successful? All right, well, I think we have a mixed bag there. So let's, let's now refocus again on what our learning objectives are for the course. And what I'm really hoping that you will be able to take away our tips on how visual themes can enhance the student's focus on course content. They don't have to worry about distractions having to do with organization. Um, and then next, so I'll be talking about the first part, and then Dan will be showing lots of beautiful art, and he's talking about how visual themes can be applied within a course and across a department or program. And then I'm going to finish up with uh, information for you on how you can work with us here in the Office of Online Education. Instructional artists and designers were here to work with you. So those are objectives. Those are the things that we want to cover in this webinar. I hope that meets your needs too. First of all, let's define what we're talking about. What is a visual theme? And as I was hinting earlier, it's, it's structure and art. Putting them two together, making a planned application. You know, all those things about art, color and shape and space and typography and various media, how all those things can be used effectively and consistently throughout a course. And then the other component in, of that, of course, is planning how all those things are going to fit in structurally into a web campus course. And I love this quote here at the bottom of the page. Style does not replace substance, but style and substance in balance work much better. Um, we have good research on that, and as I'm going to show you, it actually works. This is a, uh, an anonymous quote from a student giving feedback on one of the courses I work on, Women's Studies 113, Race, Class, and Gender in the United States. And when I saw this quote, not once during a semester was I confused as to what to do. I knew I was on an academic and personal journey and that all of the parts of class kept propelling me forward. So it's like, Yay, it worked. All this effort um, really makes a difference for students. So when you get feedback like this, it's like, yep, job well done. 
you know that the student is focusing on the content and there aren't things getting in the student's way. So moving on to specifics, how does this all work? Um, always keep in mind that design matters in an online class. And there are several of components of kind of structural things. And the first one I want to talk about is uh, the field of work that many of, that I do and several of the people in the, the webinar today, it's instructional design. Instructional design is not a random uh, concept. Uh, it's very specific. And one of the big parts is you know, aligning objectives with learning activities that demonstrate that the objectives have been achieved. And so you do that with all these things in this cute little chalkboard uh, drawing on the, on the left. Strategy, analysis, multimedia, interaction, evaluation, organization, all of those things uh, have to be planned. And when they are, that really ensures that the, the focus is on the content and not, and not a random set of information on, on a topic that students have to pick through to find what's important. Then another element of design is, is the navigation in Web Campus. Having, having something consistent there for students uh, so they always know where, the, where they're going to start, where's the, where's the solutes going to be, where, is, where, where are the activities, where are my grades. Students always want to know, so consistency the students have, don't have to guess where to find the course content. It's very important. Moving on to the next page. Ah, syllabus content, having that be consistent. Uh, we have a screen capture here uh, from a School of Nursing master's level course. And one of the things I love that they always do is they have in their syllabus a table. On the left side are the course objectives, and on the right side are the program outcomes. So they align them. They let students see, here's what we're doing in the class, and here is how it applies to the larger program activities. Uh, so consistency in syllabi is also an important uh, visual element for, st for students to know that they're going to find that information. Here we have um, some screen captures from another School of Nursing Master course. So you can, you can start to see we have green as a theme color in the School of Nursing Master courses. Uh, this is from a pharmacology class. In the um, screen capture on the right, that's just from a video that an animated narrated video regarding uh, digestion that the faculty member in the School of Nursing worked together with an artist here in the Office of Online Education to make this original video. And it fits in so nicely and consistently with uh, the rest of the course. And going along with the theme in the master's level course, here's just a whole, another one, a 709 class. This is about um, curriculum and instruction. So I'd, I'd like to step back and, and brag about the School of Nursing for just a minute because I'm the instructional designer who works with the School of Nursing. For 10 years, all graduate nursing programs have been online. They have led the way at UNLV in online program development. And over time, we have worked with the School of Nursing leadership and faculty to develop these visual themes for the programs. This is from uh, a pre-nursing pre course. It has a, a khaki color. Here is red. Red is the color for uh, the BSN level, the Bachelor of Nursing Science. Uh, so this is actually from a blended course that is running this fall in communication. A theme continues here. This is a, a doctoral course. They have indigo as their theme color, and blue and red for the Doctor of Nursing Practice online program that's a partnership between UNLV and UNR. 
So I think you get a sense by just quickly looking through those, the School of Nursing has embraced visual themes. And so students always know I'm in the right course. I can find what I'm looking for. The instruction is going to be high quality. and It's just going to be beautifully organized and visually attractive. So to conclude uh, this focus on enhancing the student's focus on course content, it's because you know, all these design issues have been settled. Students' anxiety level can be much more reduced because they don't have to worry about how things are organized and how they look because it, those, those things are settled. They can just focus on uh, the, just learning what they need to do. They know they're in the right class. It's like, you know, when students walk into a classroom and you sort of have to look over the door and make sure that, yep, I'm in the right room. Well, students know they're in the right online class. When, when there's an, a strong visual theme, they can, they can rely on finding the course content. And the bottom line is, as the instructor, when you engage in all this, you look really good. Students come in and they see this uh, professionally well-developed sense of design. It's both instructional, uh, structural, and artistic. And what you, as the instructor, do is you, you get that benefit of students saying, oh, this, person, this instructor knows what she or he is doing. And because online courses are created before the start of the semester, while you're teaching it, I mean, the course has already been developed, so you as the instructor just get to focus on the teaching and engaging with your students. So that's a massive benefit for you as the instructor. So I've concluded my comments on focusing on the students and how I'm giving you a sense of what a visual theme is like. Do you have any questions at this point? So if so, please go to the chat box, um, send to everyone, so just type it in and send it, and you now we can uh, address any issues that, you, you, that you'd like to right now. Well, I don't see any questions in the chat box. So what I'd like to do is turn it over to Dan because he is going to present you uh, with, with a good bit more information. So here we go. I'm gonna, oops, I have to find you, Dan, in the- I'm on the top the, up there. Oh, you're right next to me, whoops. Actually, before we have Dan yeah. uh, start, we have a question oh, down in the Oh, there we box. go. Uh-huh. Thank you, Gary. Uh, what was the process for nursing to decide to engage in visual themes? It was, I'm trying to think how many years ago, five or six. We, we worked together and we've actually created quite a large spreadsheet and we looked at all the um, elements of the online courses and, well, very much from the student perspective. What did students encounter? And, so I just populated this whole spreadsheet and talked it over with a leadership for nursing and, and we came to agreement that c consistency was going to help students. And so then we worked one-on-one uh, -on -one with instructors uh, to come to um, consistency and quite a number of, of issues. Um, it took some time and of course, of course the artists were involved. Um, we prioritized classes and you know, we rolled it out over several semesters. Um, so it took a little time, but the instructors who had been kind of used to just building things um, that made sense to them, that were more instructor focused. Uh, and once we got really went flipped around and really focused on being student centered and understand how the students engaged with the courses, that made it much easier for the faculty to go, okay, I see why I need to make some choices and some changes and it's time for us to move forward. I think it also helps that the, the nursing faculty, especially at the graduate level, you know, the masters and doctoral, uh, the expectation is that everybody teaches online because all those courses are online. So they uh, help each other and they brainstorm, and so it's very much uh, an agreed upon way that faculty teach and support their students. So having whole programs, not just a course here or there, was I think very beneficial for the faculty to 
with their arms around visual themes and you know, strong instructional design. So I think all those things uh, went together to be successful. Does that make sense? Yay, okay, thank you. All right, thanks. Thanks, Juan, for that question. Juan, that was a fantastic question, uh, and, and Sue, thank you for your uh, presentation. It was very informative. Dan, before, yes. before you start, let me just add, uh, for those of you who have joined us today and you have not attended one of our WebEx sessions, uh, you may have noticed that when you join and you get your mic working, I've muted you. And the reason that I've done that is so that way there's no background noise while the presentation is going on. So if you are waiting to ask questions uh, to where you're able to chat with us instead of type, that's totally fine. But please save those for the end. Uh, if you have something you'd like to chat about now, you can go ahead and put it in the box and we can address it then. But I just wanted to address everyone because if they were wondering, you know, why is my mic muted, that is the reason. So, Dan, please, thank you for letting me interrupt you. Uh, no problem, Gary. And, and, and once again, I will remind Gary that uh, I have a tendency to be so focused on what I'm doing, I might miss some of those chat questions that might pop up in the box. So uh, at any time, uh, feel free to interrupt me so that I can uh, try to address some of those questions if they do uh, appear. Okay, so how, how visual themes are developed and applied is, is kind of the title of, uh, of the section that uh, I'm talking about today. And the first thing I wanted to start out with is talk a little bit about the idea of visual themes versus branding. Uh, the basic idea behind visual themes is the creation of visual communication elements and objects that work together uh, to create unity and identity. Uh, it's very close to the idea of branding. Um, for example, companies create a name, uh, a logo, color scheme, and philosophy that helps them establish their brand identity to differentiate them from their competitors. Uh, the visual elements of their brand are used in packaging, labeling, advertisement, and media to help them sell their products or services. Let's take a look at this uh, simple drawing I, I put up here for you. Um, and if you think about it, there's probably something that's coming to your mind. And if you thought of Apple Computer, um, that is exactly similar to the icon uh, of the Apple Computer brand. Um, I didn't take the bite out and there's a slight little change in the leaf, but uh, the point I'm trying to make is visual communication can be very powerful uh, and to where even if we see things that are similar, not exactly the same, we're reminded uh, of a particular uh, product uh, or service. Uh, let's look at some more examples. Here we see uh, four different colored squares. So you might just see them as four different colored squares or maybe you thought of the brand Microsoft. Again, color, um, this isn't necessarily a logo, but colors oftentimes can indicate a different, uh, a particular type of product. Uh, in the fast food industry, red and yellow are often used um, as colors to communicate uh, the products that they're selling. Uh, so the, the two brands that come in mind that use colors like this, or the three brands, would be Burger King, uh, McDonald's, and uh, In-N-Out Burgers. Those are some examples of how colors um, can be implemented to um, create uh, an identity in a, in a brand. Um, and one last example, here we're looking at shapes and colors, kind of the combination of two. And I didn't overlap it like the, the, the MasterCard, but I bet when you saw that, you may have kind of come to, you know, that thought might have crossed your mind that, you know, the MasterCard logo. Um, and, and, and again, it's just the idea uh, of how powerful visual communication um, 
can be. Uh, as as we were looking at all those images, really there was no text to define what those things were. We had the visual elements and uh, we were able to identify um, some type of meaning uh, out of those forms. Um, so what's the point of all this? Well, symbols and shapes and colors and fonts uh, and other visual media is a very powerful uh, tool when used consistently uh, with a thoughtful plan. Um, but what's the difference between visual themes and branding? Uh, it's true that visual themes uh, for online instruction also applies uh, the same principles that branding does, but there is an important distinction uh, between the two. Uh, visual themes are not motivated by profit, um, and, and that's probably the biggest distinction between the concept of visual themes and branding. Uh, visual themes are intended to enhance a student's educational experience by providing a consistent experience while interacting uh, with learning materials. Uh, the intention that we have in, in creating uh, a sense of identity within a course uh, uh, or a degree program is to enhance the student experience. So one way we do that is is with the development of what we call the main course banner. And a course banner is very similar to the concept uh, of a book cover. Um, you know, a book cover is very important to communicate uh, what a book is about, and obviously you can't necessarily cover every topic that is covered within the book uh, with this visual cover, but you can kind of give a hint uh, about the content. And so that's kind of what we do uh, when we develop uh, these course banners uh, for the online courses. Um, we're basically trying to have uh, students uh, gain an idea of what the uh, topics are within a course. Um, and, and again, we're not trying to uh, cover every aspect of uh, what the course subject matter is about. We're just trying to give an idea of, of what this course might be in a visual way. Um, sometimes when we create these banners, we can be more abstract uh, about the, uh, the graphical elements that are placed in the background. And in, in a case like that, we're kind of relying a little bit more on the text description of the banner. All banners do have text descriptions, but they're even more important uh, when we have uh, something of, a, uh, of an abstract background where it's not necessarily clear exactly uh, what's being visually communicated. It's just kind of a, um, a, a style uh, to kind of uh, get an idea of what's going on with the course. And so in, in cases like that, we're relying a little bit more on the text. And each approach is an effective way of, of creating a banner. It just really uh, depends on uh, what's been established by the uh, course team um, and, and in some cases the, the, the department uh, um, heads uh, for, for certain academic departments. Um, so basically a course banner can help create a sense of identity uh, within a degree program uh, or a department. Here are two examples I was talking earlier about um, the different types of approaches with banners and the top sample uh, is what I would consider more of a literal approach where we're showing, um, you know, a, a nurse uh, and, and we're showing, um, you know, one of her uh, patients, uh, you know, holding an apple and, you know, obviously this is a healthy uh, type of uh, feel that we're trying to come across uh, and, and the course is indeed about uh, women's health. Um, the banner below is a little bit more abstract. Um, this is for the uh, uh, counselor education department and 
in the past, we had banners that were literal interpretations, and a, a lot of these topics and subject matters within this field of counselor education can be somewhat negative, people taking drugs and so forth and, and so on. And uh, so we got together with the department and we wanted to kind of um, see if there was a different approach that we could use and, and, and move more to an abstract uh, concept. And we came up with this um, idea of, of rebirth and, and, and redevelopment um, and, and to focus more on the positive aspects um, and at the same time, we also, uh, this is one of, uh, uh, besides nursing, this is one of the other programs that we have uh, developed a uh, theme throughout the department. And later on, you'll see examples of, uh, of, of that uh, in the presentation later. So another building block of a visual theme is the establishment of a color theme. Uh, part of the design process uh, involves instructional artists who use their expertise and, and work with the team, uh, course team members and faculty to uh, establish a theme that it, it, that works with uh, the course subject matter. And a lot of times, to be honest with you, this is left up to the artist, you know, within reason uh, to determine because we are the ones that have the expertise in this area. But um, Certainly, we like to we like to have a uh, we like to get feedback from from everybody to uh, you know make sure that you know basically everybody's happy with with some of the choices that we made. Uh, in some cases, as we uh, uh, talked about earlier, as Sue talked about earlier, with the nursing department, we had pre-established colors that are actually used to uh, indicate the class level and progression um, within within a within a department's program. Uh, and in cases like those, obviously we have to strictly adhere uh, to the established color themes that have been uh, previously established. And other departments, um, though they have may not have color themes uh, that they've uh, established for uh, class level progression and things of that nature, they may have approved uh, a complete set of banners, uh, again, going back to C the CED department, uh, where their undergraduate courses, you know, have kind of agreed to go along with this theme. Um, there is a similarity from one course to the other, and so there's a lot of greens, and you'll, you'll see that look uh, a little later when I, I give a sample of it, but that would be another example where we have to be a little bit more in line with following the guidelines of what, whatever, uh, whatever's already been established. Um, one of the things that helps in facilitating the implementation of, of these color themes uh, throughout um, a course development is the uh, concept of developing a style guide. Uh, and here I have some samples of uh, the different color themes that are used in the nursing program. And we have uh, different uh, shades that are acceptable to, to use within the, uh, uh, use within the uh, colors of, of, of the program, uh, and we even have, um, you know, uh, the hex codes so that, so the exact hue can be um, represented. And this is a great tool because the programmers, for example, if they're creating an interface, they have to create a button or something like that, they, they can just use this guide to help them like, hey, I know if I, ha I have some of these choices here, you know, for the different colors for my interface and, um, and working with the artists, of course, in consultation and things of that nature. Um, and even the instructional designers as they're going through and developing uh, different things within their course, even like color of text or, uh, you know, uh, if they have larger text and they want to colorize it, you know, they can use these color, uh, uh, style guides to, to get the uh, exact color hue. And kind of what happens when all that happens is you end up with this cohesiveness within a course. And, and again, it's just part of the building block of, of building a visual theme, but it's an important aspect. 
Um, I wanted to talk uh, very briefly about fonts. I'm, I'm by no means an expert in this area, so there may be differences, uh, uh, different opinions in it. Um, first, I wanted to just, if anybody out there may not be familiar with uh, the, the two basic types of fonts, um, I'm going to kind of talk about that for a second. One is a, a, a serif font, and I've actually giving you an example there with the word serif is done in a serif font. And, and then there is what we call a sans serif font. And, and so it's kind of confusing because the names are kind of similar, but serif fonts are, are basically uh, fonts that have these little lines attached to the end of a stroke, and sans serif fonts don't have those. In fact, uh, the word sans in French translates to the word without. Uh, that's kind of where, where that was developed. So uh, there is a debate uh, among people within the design community uh, about, you know, you know, what types of fonts are more legible than others. However, I think there's a large consensus that for computer-based screen output uh, that the sans serif fonts can sometimes be a little bit more legible um, than a serif font because they are a little less complex. Um, you'll see the opposite, like if you're reading a newspaper or a magazine article that's been printed on paper. Um, you'll almost always see a serif font being used for the main passages of text um, because those little, uh, lines at the end of the characters can actually make it easier to flow from one character to the next so they're a little easier to read. And then the last thing I want to say is, you know, this whole thing, my, my whole opinion about the sans serif font may change over time because we are uh, continually um, upgrading technology in, in display technology. For example, if you have an iPhone, your iPhone today actually has a resolution that is slightly higher uh, than what we call print quality um, resolution. Uh, it's, it's over 300 uh, pixels per square inch, um, uh, which, which is at that level of refinement. And that's a reason why when you actually look at the, 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 the print on your little iPhone that you're able to actually read it real well it's because that resolution is so high. So as technology changes, our, our main screens may have such a high resolution that it'll be exactly like looking at a piece of paper and uh, the, the, the clarity won't matter and, and, and this may not be an issue, but I just wanted to bring it up. Uh, and I hope I didn't bore you too much on that because I know that gets a little, uh, little boring, uh, boring. But uh, one, one of the things I do do is uh, when I'm using uh, fonts, uh, I always use a sans serif font, especially for uh, the main passages of text and, and, and for the items that are your normal reading characters. But if I'm developing a banner for a course and, and it's going to be a, a very large uh, font, um, I, I don't necessarily want to use a, 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 serif, a sans serif font. I may want to use something I could use something that's sans serif, but it might be a lot more stylized. Um, it, it's not going to have that generic look because it creates a little bit more artistic uh, of style uh, of the subject. Um, so that, that's my personal philosophy in typography and how it's applied uh, in courses. Uh, let's uh, talk about another factor. Uh, another building block in building a visual theme is how do we deal with images? You know, as we know, we have different types of uh, photos uh, and, and graphics uh, that, that exist out there. And we have portrait, we have landscape, we have some that are square. And then we always have these, you know, uh, miscellaneous sizes that are kind of like the, um, you know, whether they're uh, ultra widescreen or, or they're just some, you know, crazy shape that we don't normally see. Um, and one of the, we can't do too much about the crazy shapes, but actually, you know, they don't come across too often, so that's not so much of a concern. But one of the strategies we can do is to establish uh, a preset um, 
uh, determine sizes for the different types of images. And, 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 and basically the three types that we can kind of manipulate are the portrait, the landscape, and, and the square image. And um, here uh, with the portrait, you can see that the, uh, the image is 225 pixels wide by 300 pixels tall. And then when we turn it on its side, it's 225 high and 300 pixels wide. If we do that consistently within a course for every portrait image, for every landscape image, and for every square image, if we follow something like this, you're going to notice that the uh, images, when they're within the pages, uh, have a much more consistent, uh, predictable, and professional uh, look as they're presented in with the text of the course pages. And by no means is, are the numbers, uh, I'm not saying that everybody should use these exact same numbers, but once you have determined a number that works for you, once you're, you and your designer, your, your artist have determined a number that, that is a good number, stick with those, be consistent, and that is how you'll be able to utilize um, uh, that technique in enhancing uh, your visual themes within a course. Um, what's a micro banner? We know what a banner is. What's a micro banner? And why do we have micro banners? Well, I, on the top here, the top image here is a full size banner. And the banner below it, obviously, is what we would call a micro banner. And sometimes people call these different things, but for sake of ease, I just call it a micro banner. And, and basically it has the same mission that the banner does, but it takes up less space. And we use those kind of as a repeating uh, visual element uh, within the course pages to kind of give the student uh, a reminder of, hey, you're still in the same environment. Um, you're still in the same course. We're you know, and it, it ties the whole course uh, in with the course color theme and so forth. And again, it's the idea of consistency and creating a professional, uh, cohesive um, look to your online courses. Okay. Then we also have module icons, and there's there's two lines of thought within you know how these are developed, but. Again, similar to a micro banner, we create these module icons, and again, they're to help communicate, um, you know, the location of uh, of the navigation for the modules, and and the description for the for the modules, um, and there there's a couple, as I mentioned earlier, two two schools of thought on this. One is you know to have numbers. You know, uh, here on the, the left-hand side of the screen, we have samples of, you know, uh, module numbers, one, two, and three. Uh, and then the samples on the right, they don't have numbers, they're just images. But with that approach, the images are kind of customized to what is going to be communicated um, in the actual module. And um, in one way, that's a better approach, but in another way, it, the, 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 the the downfall of that approach is that it takes considerably longer to develop um, because each one of the images have to be researched and resized and, and we have to make sure that they're, they're fits for, for what the content goes in there. So it can take about eight times longer than it does to do the approach on the left-hand side. And I'm not saying either one is right or wrong, it's just that these two approaches do exist within the concept of developing module icons. Again, why do we do this? Again, it's just another graphical element that helps communicate what's happening within the course, and it's reinforcing that concept of a visual theme uh, within the course. Um, the other things that we do is when we create custom graphics that go within a course, we can style them with elements that are being used throughout other part, parts of the course, not just the color, but the actual images that exist in the background and so forth um, are hopefully relevant to some of the others. Uh, and and uh, this is an example of a, of a, of a custom inform, information graphic for uh, uh, anthropology class. And I'm gonna go to another sample here. Uh, here's an example of, it, you know, the imagery is similar, but this is actually a video now. And we have 
you know, kind of a, a background there within the video that kind of helps communicate that same idea of this Anthro 102 class. So you, when you see all these elements built into the pages, it gives you a cohesive feel um, uh, that you are in the same place and that this is a professional uh, production. And we're not just limited to things like video and graphics. This is a, a, a still shot of an interactive, um, uh, uh, what we call a learning object. And the programmers working with artists can create interactives that have a look that is uh, working to uh, strengthen the idea of the theme of the course. So this is kind of, I put everything on one page just to kind of give you an idea. As you look at all these items, it's real clear how there are similarities in color and style um, that are used throughout all these elements, and they're all different types of media that are placed within a course, um, but as they've been uh, designed, they are designed to uh, have a cohesive uh, look and feel to them. Um, and, and that's really what we're talking about when we're talking about um, uh, visual themes. Now, I'm almost finished. I know I've been talking a lot. Um, I wanted to briefly just cover the concept of uh, creating visual themes for departments and programs. And earlier I talked about the abstract concept of banner design, and we were comparing it to the more literal approach. And, and this is what we did with the uh, uh, counselor education department, and, and these are the banners that we came up with. Um, the, the blue ones on the right-hand side are the gradual level uh, banners that were developed. Uh, the green ones, the green colors on the left are the undergraduate program. And as you look at all of these, each one of the banners is different, yet there are similar elements within each and there are consistencies, for example, the font that's used, the placement of the font, um, uh, the colors that are on the left-hand side and on the band uh, that goes down on the bottom, the color of the text, the size of the text. Those are the elements of design that help create a unified, cohesive feel. And again, this is part of the aspect of branding uh, or of creating visual themes uh, for, for departments. It's not only about the banners, as we've seen earlier with the samples from uh, Sue and some of the things that I showed you uh, uh, just a few minutes ago. It's the concept of bringing these things all together. And uh, the last sample is the nursing department uh, and showing kind of, I'm showing the hierarchy of, of these nursing banners. Uh, these are the, the, the lower end, as Sue mentioned earlier. Uh, these are our foundational courses here with the tan colors. Uh, our, our red is the bachelor level, green is the master's level courses, uh, and the indigo uh, is the PhD level. And then, of course, the two on top are our doctor and nursing uh, program that is a joint program between uh, UNLV and UNR. Uh, so I think that concludes uh, my presentation today. And uh, I am uh, looking forward to answering any questions you may have about uh, visual themes for online instruction. Is anybody awake or did they fall asleep? I don't know. <laughs> I know that was a lot. Thank you, Michael. Oh, that's great, and we're not 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 done yet. <laughs> well, that's that's true. We're not done yet, and and uh, and I, I uh, and I'm not sure why we didn't unmute the microphones, but uh, that's okay. I don't know. Okay, so batting clean up here. I just want to talk with everybody about how to work with the Office of Online Education. Uh, course development teams in developing visual themes. Um, and I really hope you're thinking, that is what I want for my course. I want that uh, for my course, the program that I'm teaching in, how do I get started? So 
first off, uh, let's talk about the college or school leadership. Um, there, the leadership is essentially important. Uh, they have to be engaged in this decision for creating courses, but we're really looking for our degrees, degrees online for blended courses are completely online. Um, let's, I really hope people will take the time to think about from the student perspective, what is it going to take for a school or department to put online degree programs that focus on how the student can get through the program from course to course. And how that, once that decision is made, now the faculty should review the whole program goals and the alignment of courses. Sometimes people, faculty have favorite little courses that aren't, they have strayed a little bit. So it's, it's, it's a healthy thing to look across the uh, degree program and those courses and making sure that they're the right things for the students. Now, uh, the, the Director of Online Education, Dr. Ann Mendenhall, has been working hard to get the word out to deans and chairs that we would like to partner with, with anyone here at UNLV in the development of online programs. And she would welcome any discussion with, with leadership in the schools and departments, colleges, um, about timelines, establishing priorities, and the commitments that are necessary to engage in th this enterprise. So meeting with, with, uh, with Ann Mendenhall is, is, is a very important component of all that. Then once all those get straightened out, we move over to the column on the right. Secondly, uh, I want to make sure that, that I explain that the Office of Online Education has multidisciplinary teams who partner with the faculty to develop the visual theme, structure, instructional design, and content for each course. Every, we all bring different things as instructional designers, instructional artists, instructional application programmers, and the faculty or, or subject matter expert. We all have uh, very important roles to play in the development of online courses and programs. And we have a lot of information about this whole process. And so I hope you'll go to our website which is online.unlv.edu to see more information because uh, there's, there's quite a lot there on our newly redesigned website and so I hope that you'll find that very helpful. So that does conclude our presentation regarding developing and using on visual themes in online instruction. Um, I'd like to thank you all for participating and once again invite you uh, to go to the chat box um, or um, unmute your microphone and ask a question. We'd, we'd love your feedback. So I turn it over to you. And just so everybody's aware, I just unmuted everyone. So please oh, feel right. free to throw any questions out you may have. Um, I'd love to hear if anybody has any uh, particular visual theme that appealed to them in this presentation or something that they've uh, seen online. I'd love to hear some examples and why you think they're effective. Sue, this is Chris. Can you hear me? Hi, I just want to say I, I think I think the way that you have those visual themes is a great, great way to present the information. And it gives me a lot of great ideas as I go forward working on some of the courses um, that I'm developing right now. You know, making sure that that the themes tie into what the what the content is and not just having pictures so they're pretty on the page is such an important message that I think is really it, it, it's just vital that everybody um, work toward that goal. So thank you. Yay, Chris, thank you. Um, yeah, it helps. I know that uh, we here in online education have seen interesting uh, things like 
spitting flamingos as animated gifs uh, <laughs> gave us all a chuckle. I was like, oh, let's up, let's up our game. Let's let's see how we can um, help to make courses look more cohesive and professional. So, uh, so it's fun to just keep moving forward, isn't it? I didn't do the the, the spitting flamingo just to <laughs> let you know. Was it me? <laughs> no. <laughs> well, thank you, uh, everybody, once again for uh, um, listening to our presentation. And uh, again, uh, for those of you that work in the department, feel free to approach me at any time. I, I'm here to answer your questions and reference the theming. And I, I'm, I'm Sue. Uh, I'm sure Sue is also at your uh, disposal. Yes, Dan. Um, and I are just one uh, or two of um, a staff full of very uh, experienced and um, capable artists in many different ways. So there's lots of us here who would love to work with you. Dan, I don't know if you see that, but there's a question down there for you. <gasps> there you ah, go. Let's see. Um, I'll, I'll read the question. Dan presented a group of images a couple uh, slides ago where the images seemed inconsistent or arbitrarily assigned with the topic of the module. Well, I'd be glad to discuss that. Uh, perhaps I could click back. Do you remember? Let's see. I'll give myself control here. Can I do that? I don't have control. Yeah. So maybe. Oh, now okay. you do. All right. So there was something that we so. a couple slides back. Go forward one. One one more. Oh, the module icon. Are, are we talking about this this page? Um, okay. I think, no, the module icon. The, the module icons. Yes. So, are you referring to the 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 module icons over here no, on the no. left? The CED courses. That's CD. that's what uh, Larry was speaking about. CED courses. Great. Yep. There okay. you go. All right. And Larry, which which uh, uh, I'm trying to uh, the only thing I can see the the difference is is that the graduate department had a slightly different approach and, and they used a different color scheme for the for the four banners on the right. Is that the difference that you're talking about? I don't know if the I don't know if the concern was uh, how the how the graduate uh, department was had a different color uh, hue uh, to the images on the left. I'm not sure if that's what it was talking about, but I can tell you that the development of the banners themselves were more of an abstract concept, and they were based on the idea of people who go through a counseling program kind of redeveloping and renewing and 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 kind of a rebirth process of the idea of self improvement focusing on the positive aspects of of counseling education and, and those subject areas as opposed to showing the literal um, images of say uh, drug addicts uh, shooting up and things of that nature which is actually what we had in the past I'm not sure if I answered your question Larry <laughs> Yeah. And to go off of what Juan uh, said, sometimes the banners are abstract, not literal interpretations. I would definitely echo that statement. They're not always going to be. So, I mean, sometimes it's just if we're using stock imagery, that's going to be so difficult. And in other in times, fact, it's artistic interpretation. And in fact, this was this was this was something that the uh, that the 
head, the, you know, that the, the, the stakeholders, the chairs of the department, they wanted to take this new approach. Um, because the other approach we were, were, we were using was really coming across in a negative way. And, and, and even though this is not so much of a literal concept, the idea here, again, as I talked to you about earlier, in the creation of these uh, more ideas that are more abstract, we're relating more on the text to actually describe what the course is about, and then the imagery is is more supportive of of an underlying conceptual idea um, of the actual subject matter. That is a great point, there, Juan. Sometimes from our sex ed courses, literal is not good. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, I I hope I answered your question um, on that. Um, and I'm always uh, here to try to um, answer any questions you might have about these different approaches. Anybody else? Uh, okay, well, on behalf of Dan and Sue, we'd like to thank you guys for joining us. Um, this presentation will be archived, and for everybody that attended, I will send out a link to where you can find that on YouTube. And Dan is also working on creating this presentation uh, on a website, like in a theme template. So when that is completed, I will share that with everybody as well. So thank you, everybody. And if you have any questions, please feel free to contact us. And uh, yeah, thanks again. Thank you. All right.